What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So even though the price of Bitcoin is down at the moment, we're sitting at around $42,000. We're going to talk about why holding Bitcoin today will pay off big in the future. So we're going to do this by looking at logarithmic regression analysis of Bitcoin, and we're going to do it across multiple market cycles. So if you guys like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. You can also head over to the Discord channel where you can sign up for the DCA index risk model. So this model helps you to identify where the market is overbought when we're at these peaks and likely in need of a significant pullback. And it also helps to identify when the market is oversold and a great place to buy. So if you're interested in that, it's a free trading view indicator. You can sign up for it on the Discord channel and I'll send it out to you within a day or two. So when you think about the cryptocurrency asset class, we often think of it as a duality meaning it basically comes in two varieties. We have these phases in red here, which we saw prominently in 2012, in 2015 through early 2017, and then 2019 through 2020. And these are just simply accumulation phases. They're when long-term buyers are acquiring the asset at lower prices. Then there will be these more parabolic phases. And you know, these are when oftentimes people will first be coming into the market. These are typically caused by people learning about crypto, people telling them about crypto, and then they want a piece of the action when the market is really starting to move. So what we're going to do today is we're gonna take a look at logarithmic regression analysis, but how we're going to do it is a bit different. We're going to simply take these points here that we're calling an accumulation phase, and we're going to perform the logarithmic regression analysis only on these levels. In addition to that, we're going to perform logarithmic regression analysis on only the peaks. And what this is going to tell us, it sort of sets boundaries, a maximum and a minimum, or approaching a minimum, where we may expect the price to be. So one of the big caveats with log regression analysis, you know, let's pretend we only had data dating back to 2013. So the beginning of 2013, if we only had data for here, well, if you performed a log regression analysis at that time, how would it hold up today? Likewise, you know, what if you performed an analysis dating back to 2017 only? Let's pretend you only had data from 2010 through 2017. And the reason that we want to do this is to see if performing a log regression analysis back on only older data, so do the older data sets, log regression curves, do they hold up today? So that's what we're going to take a look at. What we're going to do with that data then is identify in the future, where might we expect these accumulation phases to occur? And where might we expect a price peak to occur? So we're going to look at these prior data sets and compare them to today's data set and see how similar or different they are. Okay, so just to give you an idea of specifically what data we're looking at, this is the price history of Bitcoin through time. And I've identified in blue the days that we're going to run the logarithmic regression analysis for. For the first analysis, we're going to look at from this stage of the cycle into this stage of 2013. Then we will look from here through this stage of the cycle in 2015 through 2017. And then finally, we'll look at the log curve for all of Bitcoin's price history. Okay, so we're only going to include the blue dates in the log regression curve analysis. We're going to exclude the red dates, which are the more parabolic phases of the market. Okay, so this is our log curve for the entire length of Bitcoin's history. And you can see that basically it travels through these accumulation phases, you know, each accumulation phase, and it just sort of sets a, you know, approximately where we might expect the price to be while we're in the what you know are typically referred to as the bear market phases of each cycle so you can see that in the past we sort of come down to this level here sometimes we go a bit below sometimes we go a bit above but in general during the bear market phase we're right around this level okay so 
you know, where is this line at right now? Right now, this line is right at around $20,000. So now what we're going to do is simply add in the log regression curve for the first and the early part of the second cycle only. And what's interesting is you can see that we have this curve right here traveling along the accumulation phase. Now, this is what we said before. You know, one of the problems with log regression analysis is if something changes in the market, you know, this can be invalidated in the future. But what we see with Bitcoin is, and I think this is actually fascinating. So this curve that we're looking at was fitted only to this data and to this data. No other data was included. So this wasn't included, this wasn't included. And yet what we see is that the curve nearly identically fits and we'll just add it in now. So the curve nearly identically fits our entire Bitcoin history data set. You can see that these two lines are nearly identical to one another and only, only fairly recently have started to diverge just a bit. You know, the data only including the first and early parts of the second market cycle is at $18,536 right now. So in spite of the fact that the first curve, the yellow curve includes only this data here and this data here from the first and early parts of the second market cycle, the log regression curves have just, you know, basically been nearly identical. Now let's just add in the second market cycle. So we're going to include the first, second, and then into the third market cycle. So in to 2015 through early 2017. And yet again, what you see is the curve is nearly identical. Now this one is a bit lower. So this one is currently sitting at approximately $16,000. So it is $2,000 lower than where we're seeing our first log regression curve. But overall, again, it's giving us a very similar picture to what the both the first and the second log regression curves are telling us. Okay, so if we just put them all together now, so you can see overall, the three log regression curves, depending on whether you collected the data only for the first and second market cycle, or the first through third market cycles, or all four market cycles that we've seen so far, the data gives you very similar results. But what does it mean in the long term? Okay, and that's what we're going to look at next. We're going to forecast this data out into the future to see where it might tell us that the bottom or the accumulation phase for Bitcoin may occur in 2023 or 2024. And we're gonna do this all the way out through 2028, all right? And specifically here, I've highlighted 116, 2024. So that is for this fact. If you look at the halving events, so here in 2012, and then again, here in 2016, and then in 2020, notice that the price of Bitcoin was nearly at the accumulation phase logarithmic regression curve in each cycle. Okay, so here, here, and here, we have been right at the accumulation phase of the log regression curve. So in 2024, we expect the next having to occur. It may be, you know, not quite January of 2024, but it will be around this time. And now what do the three different log regression curves inform us that our accumulation phase may be at that time? And they're basically telling us, so in two years, approximately two years from now, they're saying that the minimum price of Bitcoin will be somewhere around 42, you know, up to around $48,000 at its lowest prices, okay? Remember, we're talking about the accumulation phase here. We're not talking about these stages, any of these stages up here. We're talking about only when Bitcoin is at its lowest accumulation phase. And remember, this has been the, you know, this has been a fact of Bitcoin since its inception. And that's, you know, proven out by the fact that the log regression curve, if we, again, if we just take a quick look, if you only look at the log regression curve for the first cycle, it bears out today. It continues to be informative as to our accumulation phase today. 
if you know just to take a higher resolution view of this look at where we held as support other than the covid capitulation event we were literally off bouncing off of the you know this is the 2011 2010 2011 log regression curve for the accumulation phase quite frankly i think there is something to be said about you know looking at the log regression curve to at least to inform yourself where close to the bottom may be at any given time so that's at our next having all right now if you go into the future and what we said at the beginning of the video is this we're going to talk about why holding bitcoin now is going to be so beneficial to you in the future in spite of the price being down now okay if we look into the future we see that in 2023 we're expecting somewhere between 25,000 up to 31,000 okay then it goes up to around 40 to 50,000 then around 55 to 70 and you know once you get out to 2026 this basically tells you that you know almost the expected price floor sure it can go it has gone lower than than the log regression curve at times but typically it's right around this price so the floor or the accumulation phase is expected to be around 80 up to 100,000 and then etc so once you get into 2027 then you're looking at a floor of around 115 up to 142 and eventually in 2028 you know we'll be around another having at that point then you're expecting around two hundred thousand dollars now you know i don't know that first of all a, a few things can really affect this so the log regression curve cannot account for fundamental shifts in the market meaning things that are happening exogenous to the cryptocurrency asset class meaning outside of the out, outside of cryptocurrency so it could be political it could be anything um, some new form of technology etc something that invalidates the demand for bitcoin whatever that could be a log regression curve cannot account for that short of something fundamentally changing the market we may expect the price accumulation phase level to occur somewhere along these lines all right so while bitcoin may you know continue to head down and may go back to twenty-five thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars in the future we're expecting significantly higher prices and that is supported by data now what if we take a look at where the tops are occurring so here we're just looking through the major price peaks in 2011 2013 2017 and then 2021 and you'll notice that you know we basically have just been moving along this curve now this is what i want to show you though this time when we only use a short quantity of data so let's say we only look through the first through third cycles we get a different picture and we get this so the blue line is looking at only the market cycle peaks from the first cycle, second, third, and then forecasting into the future. So this is the forecast for this uh, market cycle. And you can see that it overshot both of our peaks at 64 and uh, 69,000. In fact, it suggested that the price peak could occur at around 120,000. So if we look at this data for the log curve comprised of only the first through third market cycles, the blue curve, and we project it forward into 2028. It tells us that the market cycle peaks would be, you know, 185,000. And then by 2025, you're looking at 360,000. And then in 2028, you're looking at, you know, approaching a million dollars. All right. I think that you're going to find that this blue line is not going to remain valid. All right. So we're going to look at the red line then. Okay. So this is the log regression curve for all of the cycles now so we're including the first second third and fourth cycle peaks and what you can see here is this log curve much closer matches the market cycle peak that we met at this market cycle so what that says is this one stands a better chance to inform us where we might be in the future although again i suspect this will likely overshoot where we go to although given that this cycle had a much 
less significant blow off top type event, it's more than likely more accurate than what we were seeing from this blue curve. Okay. So this tells us that in 2023, we could see a $121,000 Bitcoin. And then in 2025, $230,000. And then in 2028, compared to the $825,000 that we saw from this blue curve, you may expect up to a $500,000 Bitcoin in 2028, if the market cycle peak were to occur in January. And then according to this, that would just continue to rise over time. Now, again, this could be invalidated by both positive and negative events. Let's say there were simply global adoption of Bitcoin. You could see both your accumulation phase and your peak of the cycle just shift off of the current log regression curve. So in other words, a new paradigm shift. You can, however, also see a paradigm shift to the downside. And that could also, you know, therefore invalidate your model that you've created for Bitcoin. So in other words, this is the current log regression curve. And remember, we said that over time, you know, the the accumulation phase of Bitcoin is expected to go from, you know, where we're at right now at around twenty thousand dollars into thirty thousand dollars and then eventually fifty thousand. And then once you start getting out to like twenty twenty six through twenty twenty eight, then you start getting to a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin up to $125,000 Bitcoin, et cetera. And that is expected to increase over time according to this model, all right? So as long as nothing invalidates the model, that will likely continue to happen. So that's why we say staying in the market, there's a lot of strong evidence, at least for the price floor, there's strong evidence for the accumulation phase of the market that the price will continue to rise over time and in just a few short years, you'll expect to see the price never go below where we're at right now, according to the price floor. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you guys like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. You could head over to the Discord channel, like I said, to sign up for the DCA Index Risk Model. It's a machine learning algorithm model that I developed to help you identify these price peaks and price floors. Sign up for it. I'll send it out to you. It's a free trading view indicator. So that's it for this one, guys. Until next time, as usual, see you.